Hello everybody and welcome to our latest interview. Uh, we are at the uh, Hilton Metropole in Birmingham, which is very, very flashy, or at least it was a while ago. Um, and we've been at the Auto Mechanica show all day long and we have been joined here by Rocco, who is all the way from America. Whereabouts in America are you from? Long Island, actually. So uh, Smithtown, Long Island, which is New York. New York. There's that little piece that sticks out into the Atlantic Ocean. Ah, yeah, I forgot about that. And, and the reason why Rocco's here is because you uh, run Gliptone in America, um, and I wanted to talk to you about Gliptone. Well, I'd be happy to do that. Great. Thank so um, over the years, many people know about Gliptone. Uh, in the UK, it has really been a very much a leather-focused um, sort of product range. Uh, it was run by, uh, what's the name of the chap who ran it? He was a Yorkshireman, I believe, back in yeah, the... Yeah, Peter Parkinson. Peter Parkinson, and he, he was a leather guru as well. Oh yeah, Peter actually, Peter was a distributor before I purchased Gliptone. So I actually purchased Gliptone at this point about 22 years ago, and, and Peter pretty much came along with the deal. Mm. Um, but uh, very impressive, very knowledgeable expert on leather care. Absolutely, and um, there's a bit of a change here because it turns out Gliptone, I mean Gliptone started in 1947, I was going to make a joke about did you start it, yeah. but obviously you've, you've blown that option. Uh. Um, <laughs> And uh, but so it's New York based, uh, been going since 1947, and uh, you actually your first product was a car wax. Yeah, Glyptone, Glyptone's uh, reputation was built on the paste wax mm -hmm. and um, and, a, and a liquid wax, it, and still today the the carnauba paste, even though waxes, car waxes have are, are tending to slip a little bit in popularity, mm -hmm. that paste wax is still a very very popular product for us making thousands of, of cans per month and they're still poured the same way they were way back in the day. They're they're pretty much a one off hand poured. So very kind of traditional artisan methods. Absolutely. And what was really interesting is when you initially grew, um, I mean not that it was yourself at the time because obviously you're young spring chicken in, in 1947, oh, yeah. um, but it was it was all about organic growth. You, you'd never advertised. It was a sort of uh, almost esoteric, you know, if you heard about this new car, I'm not going to do a New York accent because it's going to go terribly wrong, but um, it was kind of passed between motorheads, you know, between them and, and that's how it, it got established, I heard. Oh yeah, it was, it was that quiet, um, spoken about product among professionals mm -hmm. and uh, Glyptone was the product to use. In fact, ironically, my father had a limousine business and as a child growing up, that was my job was to clean those cars and that was the only product that we had in the garage was, was Glyptone good. and that's what had to be used on the limousines to maintain <laughs> the limousines. So yeah, it was that, uh, that type of prestigious product. So you've had a long relationship with the brand even before you were old enough to yeah, buy it. Yeah, I guess. who knew? And, and what's your background? You obviously, you, I mean, you don't wake up one morning and say, you know what, I'm going to buy myself Gliptone. No, I was, I was in the automotive distribution business, automotive car care products. I started out at 19 years old distributing car care products. In 2005. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was a distributor for another brand of product and, and, and quickly grew, built uh, a distribution network for car care products, waxes, polishes, and again, ironically, Gliptone was one of the items that we had on the route trucks mm -hmm. that were running around servicing the. the so I guess that's shops. like in, in this country we've got uh, Autoglim and Auto Smart, and those companies have trucks and franchisees that go around and, and supply local, so you don't go to a shop to buy it. Same same type of deal in the in the U.S. Um, and Gliptone was uh, was the niche couple of items that would be on the route truck that if you wanted car wax, you know, paste wax, or even the wash and glow soap, which was a very concentrated pH neutral soap, uh, rich lathering car wash soap, um, that or of course the leather care products. So by the sounds of it, Glyptone has been very much a professional focus product rather than a kind of a, a retail product. Yeah, so interestingly enough, it's pack it, it was packaged in, in the retail consumer oriented like smaller bottles mm -hmm. and, and that sort of packaging, but it was the enthusiasts or the professional trade people that were using Glyptone products. So nowadays, who do you see as your sort of main competition in the States? So you, who would you align your brand with? So Glyptone has evolved now where when I purchased Glyptone and we were already, we had already evolved from a, from a distribution company and I had bought out some of my competition. Mm -hmm. Well, one of those competitors was kind of like that, you know, the bathtub blender 
mm -hmm. type of, of, of mixer manufacturing company. Uh, so we had purchased that competitor and the business evolved and the manufacturing operation evolved and we developed several of our own products under the, our, at the time the company name was Chemco, mm -hmm. under the Chemco brand name. So that business actually grew so large that when we were trying to look for the perfect building to set up a, a factory, we identified with Gliptone as an opportunity that looked at this is a factory that's already in place. There's there's a history there, mm -hmm. premium quality product, a heritage and, and manufacturing facility, I guess, and yeah, a, a range of products that was a perfect complement to what we were already doing. It was just, it was it was perfect, and we just so we purchased Gliptone. Uh, the Gliptone line essentially quadrupled overnight because mm -hmm. the chemicals that we were making we, bring we that expanded band, yeah. and and just basically labeled it as, as, as Gliptone and those formulas now came into what we were doing on the on the Kemco side and um, you know so so of course so the, the competitors that, that exist today to get back to, to, to your question um, there's quite a few in fact the market is I think more saturated in almost now the 30 years that I've been yeah. in this industry there's more competition now than there's ever been and it's interesting, we've got the same issue in, in over here in that we've had a lot of brands, uh, some of them are, are unique and they self-make and some of them rely on the manufacturing capacity of bigger, sort of more slightly anonymous companies, shall we say. Um, but since, I would say, 2010, the number of brands has multiplied by, I would say, 100. I think that's even, even fair or, or not far off. So you've got the same issue in the States yeah. with lots of new brands coming in. The States, so you've got a lot of established brands, like the likes of Meguiar's and stuff have been around for a long, long time. So yeah, Meguiar's, although Meguiar's um, was, I, the focus was more on retail consumer packaged product, and then in the body shop, there was certain pockets, I guess, where there was more of a, of a, of a push for it. Mm -hmm. um, the retail consumer products, are that, that side of the business is pretty much dominated by the Armoralls, and turtle mm -hmm. waxes, the uh, volume retail the, stuff. Yeah. yeah, and what was interesting is Gliptone had maybe fifty stores retailers that they sold to when I bought the company. We grew that to several hundred. Wow. It, it took years to do this, but it, we grew it with retailers that were like the specialists in their markets. Maybe the five store to forty store chains, mm -hmm. family owned and operated, cared about quality, and they would feature Gliptone products. But then what would happen is those those large box retailers, mm -hmm. the the Advance Auto Parts, uh, AutoZone and Pep Boys yeah. and O'Reilly's, those guys Massive just were yeah. gobbling those guys up. And and as they would gobble them up, they would pretty much plan a gram for what was selling quickly nationwide. Yeah. The companies that had those big advertising budgets, and because Gliptone really didn't fit into that category. Got edged so out, we, we got edged yeah. out, and and it was one small chain after another, and before you know it, we were right back down to a few dozen stores. Okay. And 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 that's during your proprietorship. That, that yes, that yes, and it was it was discouraging, and and I thought, wow, you know, I think it's time for me to refocus mm -hmm. on the professional side, which was yeah, what, how I, yeah, yeah, that was that was our roots, that was my roots, and um, it it was. It was nice to visit with a detailing professional or a car dealership that would uh, connect you with their reconditioning department and it was run by somebody who took pride in his work. Yeah. And if he really liked the quality of the product, he was purchasing your product. And he would be loyal. Yeah. yeah which is different on the retail side. It's, it's, <laughs> on the it's retail, a lot that's of a pretty new color. Why? Different things. Yeah. Packaging is a big thing. Your advertising budget's a big thing. Um, well, and discounting over here, we've got you know big kind of car care supermarkets, and the number of times you go in there and a product is you know buy one get one free or buy two get a third free, and people will try new things. Hell, I'm guilty of that. Um, if it's if it's cheap, and of course they've got so much more margin to play with. In the old days of a, of a kind of controlled distributor, reseller, consumer, Eric was taking a small amount, and it was a kind of established business practice, there was a bit more respect to it. Right. Whereas now, it's volume, you know, they'll do anything to get a big killer account, and, and that means that these guys are getting, you know, 60 points off, and so they're happy to give 30% off, because they're still making 30 points. And, and sometimes they're giving the merchandise for free. Yeah. So, and I've been asked that, and, and sometimes they're giving the merchandise for free. Like on the car wash soap, car wash soap is something that the retailers 
came to expect as well if I'm spending X amount of dollars on a, a season opening order, mm -hmm. I need all the car wash soap for free because we're going to run a promo and, and if they buy a certain amount, we're going to give them a bottle of your soap for free. Yeah. The Wash & Glow, see, similar to all the other Gliptone products, the original ownership mm -hmm. was, was really like, uh, the, the quality was the most important thing. Yeah. There, was, there were no salespeople, it was as you said earlier, word of mouth. <clears throat> the ingredients was our calling card. Mm -hmm. The car wash soap, it was ridiculous how much money is, is in the yeah. car wash soap. With 18 ingredients, uh, the Wash & Glow could be diluted five or six times and it would compare to what was on the shelf. Yeah. And we explained this is why we can't give you a 64 ounce bottle for, for that you can sell for two ninety nine, but it didn't matter. No, they're not interested in that. But again, it's horses for courses. Again, we get the issue with, a, you know, you don't go into a Rolls Royce dealership and try and barter them down. And I mean, we, I see this often with manufacturers saying that we're, we're producing a Rolls Royce product and we've got people coming in wanting, you know, more, uh, I can't use another brand here because I'm going to get trouble, aren't I? But so we say a, a less expensive brand than Rolls Royce, you know, pricing. Right. And, and yeah, it is, and it's um, communicating that message because again, the difference between price and value is a really big thing. And I try to say, and it's the same with professional detailing. People say, oh, this bloke will do it for 50 quid. Yeah, but you'll then have to pay somebody else to rectify all that and then do it all over again. So, you know, pay cheap, pay twice, all the rest of it. And, and it's the same principle within the products. But anyway, we could rank for this for hours by the sounds of it. Um, I'd, so I want to sort of move it on slightly. Mm -hmm. um, so we've talked about the early years of Glyptone in the UK, uh, again, the leather focus. And then we had Star Brands, who I met briefly when it was running, and they are a kind of a big volume company. And now, exciting times, it's moved over to Stainguard, who have a lot of expertise in leather and materials and all that beforehand, and are much more of what I would describe as a, a specialist company. I don't know if that's a fair comment. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, in fact, uh, the owner there, Mr. Paul Easton, I was actually very impressed when, when he and I first met and he, he gave me his, his background on um, you know, not only the, uh, the industry but uh, his knowledge of, of leather and, and how to restore leather. And I was actually impressed because we, we manufacture products and we manufacture the leather cleaner and the leather conditioner to a, a very high standard of quality. But in the past, Gliptone has never been involved, or at least I should say, Gliptone, the manufacturing company in the USA, has never been involved in the glues and the dyes and the restoration. So he was speaking to me in language that I really wasn't even completely familiar yeah. with because our focus had been just primarily cleaner and conditioner. But the encouraging thing for us as a, as a factory is now we had a company that was interested in not just the leather, they recognized the quality and the brand and they felt okay let's take Gliptone and all the people who know Gliptone who are aware of Gliptone and it, expand the, the range of products mm -hmm. that the UK market is, is from you know is, is used to which was obviously music to my ears yeah. that's what we wanted to do all along um, and that's what we're doing right now. That's going to be, it's an interesting challenge and what's fascinating is you came to Auto Mechanica of all places. So Auto Mechanica, for those who don't know, is very much a B2B sort of sort of show. It's where manufacturers find distributors, it's where, uh, you know, uh, manufacturers find OEMs and stuff like that to work with. So strangely, it's actually a free show for exhibitors coming, but it, there's a lot of business done, lots of suits and lots of very serious looking people. Um, and it's very international as well. It starts in Germany, I believe. Um, Yes, that's that's the big one, and it's um, it every huge. other year. Yeah, yeah. and and I, I haven't been, but I really really want to go. And and what's interesting is that that is, uh, you know, your approach is very much trying to again go back to to the roots and and look at the professional market rather than going into the, kind of the big retail side of things, and trying to hit car care generic or, or general, should we say, car care products in this country. That's a big mountain. You know, you're, you're sat at the bottom K two looking up and thinking, right, how are we going to do this, chaps? Uh, and I think that's going to be a really, really interesting challenge, and it will be a challenge, I suspect. Um, and what do you think sets yourself apart in the modern day? Because I know you were saying in the past, you know, you did the car wax and it was word of mouth and everything like that. But in the modern world, where everybody's product is the best in the world and it's remarkably good value in all of this, why would somebody say, OK, I'm going to give this Gliptone a go? So Gliptone is, is as, at this point, a 71-year tradition of, of quality and not just for 
what's fashionable today mm -hmm. and, and like you know the ceramic coatings are fashionable today there's there's certain uh, items that the industry is, is and for good reason mm -hmm. you know the industry is making money on some of these things today so <laughs> just it's, a little it's, yeah. it's a good thing uh, it's a really good thing actually uh, but Glyptone is so much more than that so we have in my opinion we're uniquely qualified mm -hmm. to give these buyers, these prospects that come to a show, like, like SEMA or Auto Mechanica, an opportunity to connect with a company who can give them everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I say everything, we have the consumer packaged, re the retail mm -hmm. packaged, consumer oriented products. We have the professional range, uh, you know, 600 products in, in, in width. We also manufacture a full range of car wash tunnel chemistry. And, and that's an important word, is you manufacture. So these are your products. You won't find a Glyptone product under a different label in a, in a different bottle. Um, which it, and, and in terms of formulation, do you employ your own chemists or do you consult with chemistry chemists? How does that it's, work? It's actually a little bit of both. Uh, so we do employ our own chemist, but there are times when we need some help in, mm -hmm. a, in a special niche part of the business, whether it's an abrasive or detergent mm -hmm. or or like the ceramic. Uh, like ceramic. I, I, there are very few ceramic companies that produce their own ceramics. Same with compounds are very complicated. Very few companies, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll kind of assemble this if you like, but the, the raw ingredients come in pre-made because they have to because of the process. Uh, well, yes and, and, no. and no. In, in many cases they do. Uh, there's a common ingredient Mm -hmm. In the ceramic coatings, yes, which is the polysilazine. I don't know how much of that you might be familiar. Oh, we've bought our, our watches for, for many <laughs> hours on ceramic coatings. Okay, so the, so most of them contain that same base ingredient, but then the difference in the solvent carriers and the fillers is what makes somebody's coating more unique than the other coating, and that could mean that that coating is gonna dry or cure a little bit faster mm -hmm. or slower. It might um, it, it, it might dry harder, or it might be it might have some more flex to it. So there's some subtle differences. Um, it's funny that you bring that up because I've got my my page oh, two okay. here. <laughs> I uh, I heard from a little birdie slash your website that you've got three ceramics out there. Um, so you do a range of three different ceramic products. Actually, there's there's even more than that. But for, specifically for the paint, there's yes. there's three levels. Okay, let's focus on paint. Yes. I'm guessing okay. For wheels and, and other wheels and, and and leather and and, Ooh, and ceramic, ceramic and and glass. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's going to be interesting because leather obviously is a bendy material. Yes. So creating cement for that that sounds like a conversation. We can have to do two interviews at this rate because we run out of batteries. Um, but you do three. You've got GT quartz, um, and then within that you've got the Select, the Pro, and the Titanium. Right. So um, what are the differences between the three of them? So the select is our is basically our entry level coding, mm -hmm. and we're you know you don't necessarily need to come for a, a training to purchase the the GT Quartz Select product. That's our three year coding. It's a lot more forgiving to work with. Um, the flash time is um, again more more forgiving. So for the the detail shop who's just getting involved in ceramic coatings, uh, that's a good product to get a feel for how long you should leave the product on before you work towards leveling leveling mm -hmm. off the coating. It's not going to cure too fast on you and become streaky or difficult to remove. But you're still pitching it towards the professional, it's not oh, for yeah. somebody at home. Oh too. yeah, yeah. we don't sell it to a consumer. None of those products you mentioned are sold to a retail consumer. Well, that's, I think, very responsible because again, there's oh, yeah. uh, you know, the idea of, of some ceramics going out to, to just end users. I mean, we're just from the trade association point of view, there are quite a few who have applied it, you know, owners of cars who have applied themselves and then it's gone a little bit wrong. Oh, yeah. It's terribly expensive repairing that stuff. Yeah, no, it's, um, no, this is something that, you know, see, we've been in this business for a long time. Yeah. So we've made friends. We're selling second generation detailers. I, we have customers who I have trained and, and supplied their, their dad, mm -hmm. and now the son is involved in detailing, and, and they're coming through our training programs. And so we have a lot of respect for the detailing industry. It's a lot of that in a sense. It's intri intriguing that, because over here, I think, um, it's a younger industry in many respects, and I'm not aware. I think with body shops, you quite often get that pass from father to son and all the rest of it, or, or from mother to daughter, but probably father to son. And um, the uh, in detailing, you see less of that. You see quite a few details trying to get their kids involved in it because it's what daddy does or what mommy does. But um, in America, is that a big thing where, where if you've got a detail shop, it's a, you know you hand that down to your son who hands it down to their son, and then you know you, you know sometimes yes, not 
Not as much, mm -hmm. but so what's happening that's different today, as I'm sure you're aware with it, with these coatings, not just to select the professional and, and our top of the line, which is the titanium, the shops are making money at every level. Yeah. So it's the type of trade now that you certainly don't mind encouraging your son or, yeah. or daughter to get involved because there's an opportunity for them to make money. They do the job right, and it's a craft that's now being respected and compensated mm. at a level that didn't exist before. Kind of jealous, you know, because over here we're, we're behind you in that respect, because here there is respect for those who know obviously what detailing is, and there's a lot of respect for the artisan, the craftsman side, the skill, and it's kind of art and science, but in terms of the wider population, even among the wider population of car enthusiasts, the, you know, people do still say, well, you're basically a car washer, aren't you? And, you know, you sit there and you think, well, no, actually, we're not. But, you know, I, I, I don't have time to explain it to you or something like that. Um, and so the plan that we have for, for marketing with, with, in cooperation with Stangor and these coatings from the entry level, professional, and, and the titanium level is to certify the shops, provide the training that they need to make sure that they're doing the job properly. Yeah. I mean, we've created a 28-page training manual and it's a two to three day training class to certify the technician. And how much focus, because again, we, the training courses are, and accreditation is it's a hot topic, should we say, because there are some companies where you get certified just by buying the product. Mm -hmm. And there are other ones where they'll train you on their particular product, so the application of that, but they won't train you on the machine polishing and correction work required prior to do it. So your training accreditation, do you cover the full preparation of a vehicle Prior to the application, yes, it's it's a it's the full process from washing and decontamination to paint correction to prepping for the for the coating to be applied, applying the coating, and in a, in the more advanced classes, using an HVLP gun to spray the coatings oh, wow. for yeah. rims and, and and that that sort of and just final detail work and out the door. So we cover we cover it all. Um, when when they're finished with the class, and we don't take somebody who's just like a restaurant tour, for example, and they decided to make a career change and become a detailer. We're looking for people. That's why we we have a map in the booth, mm -hmm. and it's got stars where we already have accredited. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, are, are you giving exclusive centers. territories away yes. to people? Yeah. Yeah. So w if somebody starts to tell us their story, and they say, "Hey, look," and they show pictures. Uh, these mm -hmm. are the cars. Take, evidence, take yeah. a look at my shop. This is and and it's really clean looking. And they, it looks like they do good work and they take pride in their work. We tell them, you know what? Somebody should be respecting what you've been doing all along. Well, we are uniquely qualified to make you a star. Yeah. And we want to literally make you a star on our map. Yeah. And with the amount of effort and, and, and investment that we want to make into the social media marketing side of things and the, the Gliptone GT Quartz ceramic coating program, we're looking to generate qualified leads. When I say qualified leads, the consumers that have already now been educated mm -hmm. because they've received emails from us and, and they're on like basically a drip campaign that explains the whole process and once this algorithm that, that has been created for us has determined that this consumer is actually it's truly jump, interested yeah. in risk. It's hot as we used to call it in sales days. Then hot to trot. We're giving that lead at no charge. To the to, to, the, to, the, to the nearest detail. to the nearest to the nearest shop. So now he doesn't have to spend his time to explain that he's not that wash bucket guy yeah. that's going to be able to do their car for one hundred dollars. He's that three wash bucket guy who's going to take a thousand dollars, but he's going to do a different job. They yeah. understand. They they know the consumers are starting to become a little more educated about it, and they're willing to pay the money. And we're making sure that if you're affiliated with us those shops are trained properly and they're going to make money. Their success is going to be our success, so for sure we want to make sure that they're successful. Well, that's it's good to hear that, and as I say, there are lots of companies out there, ceramic companies, who are approving, and there are lots of different standards, and you know, it's, it's a bit of a lion's den out there, particularly on social media, but by the sounds of what you said so far, that sounds like a very promising sort of foundation, and what I like is it's a kind of your trip feed side, it sounds like you're kind of bringing a little bit of uh, American marketing zest into, you know, tr a quite a traditional sort of UK you know, hat dash, should we say, approach. So it's, it's good to see that, and that'd be interesting to look through. Um, one couple of other little things I mm -hmm. want to pick up, because uh, as I say, we, we had a look through and, and, and did some digging, and there are some fascinating things that you do over in the States, 
which we don't do here, which I think would be really cool. So for example, we've got Carfax. So in the States, it's like HPI over here. It has a record of a vehicle. So if you buy a nicked car, and I've done that before by mistake, I didn't nick it, I bought it off the person who nicked it. It was really cheap. And um, the, I gave it back, don't worry. Um, but the um, point being is that you've got the record of the car. Whereas if, if a detail has applied your products, they can actually update the car facts relevant to the vehicle to say that this car has had this ceramic coating applied and it's had this maintenance routine, which is amazing because then you could be a, a, a fifth owner 20 years later and you know that this has had a ceramic coating when it was new. And that is, it's very cool, frankly. Um, oh yeah, it brings, it, it, it brings value to the program. It brings value to the shop who's doing the application. Mm -hmm. That car's history if, if you were going to purchase that car tomorrow and decided to pull up the VIN number and look for accident history and repair work history, it's going to show that this shop installed the Glyptone GT Quartz Professional on, on that date, and it's um, a seven-year program that was, that was uh, the application. Mm -hmm. And, and they see the date and they see that there's, there's still something there, there's some value there. And Carfax has recognized that and, and we're pretty excited about that. Is that exclusive to you or do, or do other car care brands in, in America there's, use that? To our knowledge, there's I think there's one or two okay. others, so, uh, but we're one of a, a very small group, so we're happy about that. Another interesting thing is a lot of these ceramic companies, they offer guarantees of some description now. Some of them are, are kind of slightly full of holes. It's like, it'll last the lifetime. As long as the lifetime is 28 days and only when the wind is blowing to the west. Um, but other ones are quite straightforward. And you read them and you think, crikey. And, and ultimately what they say is, well, it's worth giving the guarantee because we'll get only a small percentage of people using it. And it'd be cheaper for us to just reapply it to those cars that have failed or, or they think they've failed. Um, your guarantee, though, is interesting in that it qualifies based on the age of the car. So if you've got a brand new car and you apply product X to it, should we say GT Quartz Titanium, why not? Um, which I'm guessing got TI-02 in it. Uh, yes. Yeah. And... Um, so, and um, it, the, the, the warranty is different as if uh, compared to if the car was 10 years old and then there's policy. How does that really work? Because theoretically the car could have been resprayed or if a car's perfectly prepared and machined then surely it's going to be in a better state than a car that comes from a factory, which isn't always perfect, and the prep isn't done as well. Yeah, it's a concern. It's, it's certainly a concern that the later model cars that qualify for the warranty that could have been damaged and repaired, not quite at the level of mm -hmm quality and professionalism so that's where our danger zone may e exist if, if there is one uh, but generally speaking the steps that were taken to qualify and and train the technicians to apply the product the formulas are legitimate they last they will bond to that surface and they will be there what what people need to understand I, I guess when I say people maybe ultimately the consumers but also the shops is that eventually that coating and I would say eventually it, it's it could be within a year mm -hmm. that coating could lose its hydrophobic finish to the point mm -hmm. where it's not beating the water off the way it did that does not necessarily mean that that coating is not still there the coating foundation is still bonded to the car yeah so the car still has its protection, but it still requires maintenance. Well, you're not alone. I mean, there are a lot, and, and, and I've talked to big ceramic companies as well who focus primarily on ceramics, and they say some of the best protection is actually hydrophilic, and that the hydrophobic beading thing is really a trend. Um, and for a lot of products, you'll see the guarantee does last, but it depends on, say, an annual service, which is essentially a wash and an application of a, of a topper, which does kind of reignite, should we say, the hydrophobic finish. But I, I'd absolutely take your point on that. And it is a thing that we're covering in the next issue of the magazine in some depth, and that is about uh, new car protection and about how hydrophobicity is not king. I like beads. You probably like beads. Do you like beads? Mm. I bet you like beads. You don't like beads? weird but uh, most, people, <laughs> most people like beards beads rather not beards that's a different story wait no no i'm sorry i thought you and, and the, maybe it's the accent there that's got me a little bit i know i'm the one with the accent right yeah but i thought you were asking me if i like beats no i mean beads <laughs> jeez <laughs> gee weird um oh. no but so so beads yeah of course it's a it's an exciting thing to watch those beads roll off the car and the consumers are looking for that and if you don't see that but you yeah you're right about the hydrophilic part of this, if, if, if we had a coating, or certainly we can make a coating mm -hmm. that's hydrophilic, so it's just going to be a flat, sheet the water's going to sheet yeah. off the car, yeah, that would be ideal. 
but the consumers won't be able to appreciate and recognize that you still have protection. Exactly. So that's the reason we can't do that. And the thing with beads, what happens is the rain falls, and if you look at all the other cars, they, they sheet over, and then you've got your nice beady one, but then the water evaporates, and the little speck of dust that makes each drop of rain sits there, and it looks like you've been driving through the Sahara. So it can be slightly counter, counterproductive in that respect. Well, the, the beading, uh, the, what could be said about the beading, is the self-cleaning effect. It's what I use when the police stop me for speeding. Is that they say, you know, why so are you doing 120? It's like, well, the beading's pretty poor. The only way it's going to come off is doing that. There, there and, you go. And yeah, they, it doesn't ever work. Apparently, something about primary school being a 20 zone. Um, but anyway, um, so we have covered that bit, and I think that's interesting. You also do products for aviation and marine, which is, I guess, not a surprise because when you're developing your own products, it's quite easy to change and alter things slightly. Now, some people just put automotive ones into an aviation bottle and quadruple the price because obviously. Right. Um, do you, are your formulations for, for boats and aeroplanes significantly different or entirely the same or uh, uh, no they're I would I would say depending on the product um, moderate to significant differences and most of those differences are in readily biodegradable formulas mm -hmm. because in most cases the marine products are being used in the water so if there's discharge we, we yeah. cannot have that discharge affect the marine life so the yes. soaps and multi-purpose cleaners are readily biodegradable and the sealants, even the, um, the rubber treatment, uh, we have something called weather shield and molding magic on the marine side that have amino functional, like functionality built into the, the, the base of, of, that, of those formulas. So they'll cure to the surface. So it's not just greasy silicon, they'll go into exactly the Exactly. Right. A heavy fish. rain yeah. is not going to wash them off the side of, of the boat. Yeah. Okay, they'll just be beading, they're, they're more UV resistant, so that's what you get out of the marine RV side of the... Um, how are you finding, if I say the, the letter CLP to you, and regulations, because obviously in America you've got different policies, um, and they seem to sort of mm, change with the wind sometimes, whereas over here, um, as of uh, quite a long time ago now, we've had our new regulations, which you need new logos, it needs to be EU friendly, it needs to have the correct sort of warnings on and, and explain to children that no, they shouldn't drink this and explain to adults that no, you shouldn't put it in your eye and if you do, A, you're a fool and B, go to hospital. Um, how have you done with all the labelling from the US over to the UK and also you can't use words like trunk and stuff like that because otherwise, you know, it, it's, it's wrong. Um, how, how have you managed to, to do that side of things? So, so it's been challenging and it's been very expensive. Yes. Um, but we do take safety seriously and dead customers can't pay their bills well yeah and uh, you know yeah, certainly we, we we don't want uh, anybody getting hurt from using a glyptone product so where the disclosures need to be made we want to be able to make those products uh, make those disclosures so the products are safe and the users understand what they're what they're working with uh, at the same time obviously we're concerned about disclosing the entire formula to the to the tune of exactly what the percentages are of those of those formulas for proprietary reasons. So you, it's it's this it's balance. balance. Yeah, in the MS, MS, what we're talking about here is MDS sheets or MSDS sheets rather, uh, material safety data sheets. And in there, if you've got a, a particular chemical, you have a CAS number, and then you have to put normally within a range what sort of ratio you've got. So um, and that is for dangerous products as well as for non-dangerous products. But within there, you have to put all the active ingredients, and I agree that that can potentially give away, which is why a lot of products say it has this super dangerous radiation biological product anywhere between 0.1% and 100%, and that way they kind of escape things, but it's not very useful if, if somebody's shoved it in their face and you've got to go to the doctor and the doctor's looking at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there, there, there is a limit to what that range could, yeah. it could be. Um, and so several years back, we went through a, a change, uh, this evolution that was... Um, they're no longer called the MSDS sheets, now they're okay. SDS sheets. SDS, there we so go. So safety yeah. data sheets. And it's GHS SDS, so global harmonization. That was really interesting. So it was a global harmonization. Was it really? <laughs> right? but, but global harmonization, and there's a list of about 100, GHS Canada, GHS USA, GHS, like for, for every country. And I'm thinking, well, hold on a second, this is... So we're going to do GHS USA, our global harmonization to, to match and meet USA standards. Shouldn't that cover us For the throughout the world? world? But unfortunately it doesn't. So um, there still are various versions of, of safety data sheets. Have you ever thought about bringing up your great leader? He's over here at the moment. As I yes, to I, our old I, lady. I just heard earlier today, actually. I've been so busy with uh, Glyptone business. 
Well, I heard, I heard a big US celebrity was coming over and I thought, how do they know about our meeting, you know? Um, so, so yeah, that was a joke, Timing. sorry, left hand for jokes. Um, so I think, I think we've covered most things. Um, oh yeah, now I've got some quick fire questions here. Back in the USA, what do you drive? Ooh. Um, Don't say a car. I, well, it, the, why I say that, it's interesting that it's a four-door GMC 2500 HD Denali. I know what you mean. With a yeah. diesel motor. And Ooh, then is I it a Cummins diesel? It, no, it's the... Um, Perkins? Uh, 6.2 no, liter? No, 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 give me... No, it's... Um, it's a it's a six it's a six eight it's a six eight or six six two. one eight okay so it sounds it's chunky does it make black smoke when you when you pour no, it next to no it doesn't and it's got some really good speed it's uh, okay. good real good GMC product it's the first time I've had a diesel motor in a pickup truck and it's very impressive it's and it's a luxury it's a cab, at the same time yeah. yes you can fit six people in it has it got the bench seats at the front it, no. It's got the buckets in the front, bench in the bench in the back. back, and we pull the Gliptone trailer with that thing. Yeah. So it's a thirty-foot trailer, and we bring it to car shows, put up the awning, and put out products. Is that on the fifth wheel, or you do that? Yes. Yeah. So the uh, trucks over in the states, they've got different rules and regs. They can tow much more, and the fifth wheel, so it's literally like a juggernaut connection. Very cool. And the, the other vehicles are little Fiat A bars. Okay, that's fun. I don't fit in those, but yeah. No, we, no. Uh, we, and what car, what's your dream car? What, if you had all the money in the world? Oh, I'd probably be the, uh, maybe I'd take one of your Aston Martin. Uh, oh, good answer, yeah, good answer. Also, yes, yeah, make sure you've got recovery. Um, so in terms of car care products, what's your favorite Gliptone product? Oh, uh, probably be the Paste Wax. Paste Wax. And a difficult question that people often go very red when asking, uh, what's your favorite non-Gliptone product for cars? Mm, that is a difficult question. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Um, so I, I I make it my mission that if if there's something out there in a category of product that Glyptone does not manufacture, mm -hmm. it, it it's really I lose sleep until we actually have created a product that that fits that that niche that yeah. niche. So. Um, um, but there must have been a product in your product testing, in your competitive analysis, in your comparisons, okay. and you so thought, this is to, really good. To, to give proper credit, um, we were manufacturing metal polishes, yeah. and we currently have three. Okay. We have a coarse, a medium, and an ultra-fine. And it was actually, and, and we tested against 20 products, and some of the fastest, biggest sellers on the market, oh, very good. No, they, they, they got like blown out of the testing have you you've obviously immediately you, you've read issue H, the pro detailer magazine where we also tested a, a number of metal polishes and, and found quite similar results and the, the ones that we had never heard of were actually the best brand brand. That, well, yeah I, we didn't try the glyptone ones obviously unfortunately but uh, well there was a there was a product there that it gave us a run for our money which was actually i don't know if it's a german or a uk product the autosol brand autosol yeah you see, over here, Autosol has been around for ages. If you ask anyone in the, in the car trade or detailing or anything like that, a metal polish, the first one they think of, um, certainly the older generation would be Autosol. Well, that was the brand that kept us in testing for 18 months, to bastards. be fair. Absolutely bastards. But <laughs> I suppose, as a consequence, as a consequence <laughs> now, you've got yes, a better product. Yes, we're very proud of what yeah. we've created, and we can uh, uh, confidently say that we have a product that Nearly as good as auto so yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's better now. <laughs> it was better. It, it was it was a tough one, but so that was a good one. No, no, I like that, and it's good to have that, that kind of story behind it, really. Um, and so I think we have come to the end of everything. I still want to know who you would most compare yourself to in the states in terms. So the people who don't know Gliptone, uh, apart from out of the leather side, mm -hmm. if you would say name a brand that we get over here that is kind of at a comparable level. So for example, at the very top, you've got the likes of. Uh, Zymol and Swiss Facts and the very expensive exclusive brands and the bottom as you say you've got the the cheaper brands um, where would you pitch yourself I mean obviously your professional focus yeah, so we, we, we view ourselves as a micro brewery of, okay, of, yeah. of waxes and polishes um, so our, our, our products are manufactured in a 20,000 square foot building where there's other manufacturers that are considerably larger mm. than, than Glyptone but we pride ourselves on the on the quality um, so it's the all about early the, the stories, niche, I guess, or the niche. Well, yeah, and so I was—I've been in this a long time. So the, the early stories of, of the McGuire startup and, yeah. and the family's heritage and, and their you know passion for you can for identify quality. with that. Yeah, yeah. T today it's it's difficult because there's so many marketing companies 
yes. that are promoting themselves as the, the manufacturers, the manufacturers. Yeah. and it's it's very different than than what we do so it's um they may be uh, we, we may have a lot of respect for those companies for the efforts that they that they put into promoting the you know their products uh, but it wouldn't necessarily be at the same level of um, yeah. commitment to the manufacturing process, I would say. No, I understand. I understand. That's annoying. They're the prob testing They process. probably make more money as a consequence, but in a way... Uh, uh, I yeah, sleep better, I mean, I'm it? sure they... Yeah, yeah. they... Exactly. We're well, Rocco... Moving it's... in that direction as, as fast as we can, though, <laughs> growth-wise. Uh, not, not, without sacrificing the quality Well, we'll get, I'm sure you'll get that Aston Martin at some point soon. It'd be good. Anyway, Rocco, it's been a pleasure. It's been really thank fun to rock it, and, and thank you. Uh, you know what a character, guys. And and uh, I think you know just for that, really check out the Gliptone range. It's going to be all available. A lot of it is already on the UK site, uh, which we'll put links to and everything in the bottom of the description. Um, and give it a go. You know, there's, the leather stuff is proven. Um, we've done leather. We've done tests with the leather stuff. We've done all sorts of things in the past, and I'm really interested to start trying some of your wider range on the cars. Um, certainly the ceramic coatings are definitely of interest and I really like how you're going about with the accreditation of that. Um, it's, it's a very difficult line to, to kind of balance along and uh, many have tried and failed and uh, I think you've very much got a kind of a good strong foundation of what you're saying, um, putting it in the right direction, focusing on skills and getting the best of the best to do things because that's the best way of doing things really. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to the, the new product coming out and we will be writing a lot in the latest issue of the magazine, issue 9, which will be coming out on the 21st of July, uh, which probably isn't that far away by the time that this video comes out. Um, and so have a read and see what you think. And it's available from www.pro-detailer.com. Uh, and as I say, we'll put links uh, for all the Clipstone products below. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.